Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to this week's You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and I'm glad you joined me. Today, I have Aurora Sattler with me. She is the author of The Ultimate New Mom's Cookbook, and she has worked as the creative director of of Mini Kitchens, which is an e-commerce site devoted to promoting the best small batch art seasonal food throughout the nation. She previously owned her own New York City catering company and wrote for Chili Pepper Magazine. And she lives in New York with her two small children. And I am just thrilled we're going to be talking about cooking with kids today. Welcome to my show. Thank you so much for having me. I was excited for this. Now, um, as my listeners know, I have four children and between the ages of 10 and 16. And it's been a kind of a passion of mine to teach them life skills three chores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I um my one of my kids said to me when we were I was upping their chores cuz they were capable of doing it around the house. And they're like, "So what are you going to do now, mom?" I'm like, "Believe me, there are plenty of things that your mother is still <laughs> going to do." <laughs> oh my gosh, they turned it they back did. on you. <laughs> they did. Funny. They're so funny. They felt like they were my little slaves. But one of the things that I think that can be very intimidating to, to parents is cooking. Um, many of us are very particular about, you know, the cleanliness of our kitchen, <laughs> cross-contamination, um, and letting kids play with sharp objects like knives and a hot stove. So, you know, how, just just before we get into some, and I know you're going to give us some really great tips on working all that out, but how do we kind of get over that, that angst we may have with letting our children into the kitchen? Okay, I think the first thing is, um, I think in a society we live in where there's so many shows about chefs and everyone can go out to a restaurant, it's sometimes food, I think, feels too heightened. Uh. And then you have to dial yourself back and say, you know what, everybody has to eat. And the funny thing is, um, sometimes my kids don't like my most impressive meals. I mean, I'd say probably most of the time, you know, they'll fall back on comfort food. So no parent should really be daunted by the idea of cooking or feel overwhelmed that they can't handle it. There are so many different cultures of food, so many different recipes, and there really is something for any skill level and any amount of time that you can accomplish in the kitchen. I I love that. And I think that we do need to kind of deconstruct the mystery in the kitchen, right? I mean, not everything I cook is Instagram (laughs) worthy, (laughs) which is fine. I'm perfectly happy with that. You know, I figure as long as I give my children good, healthy food. We're off to a great start. Yeah. And just cooking, just cooking alone will make your food a little healthier just because you're doing less processed food, less packaged food. So just the simple act of cooking, whatever you cook, you're already doing, you're already accomplishing something. I feel better about myself already. (laughs) Thanks. So now, and getting kids in the kitchen, some kids, I know, I mean, obviously there's shows about young chefs and I'm looking at a seven-year-old yeah. going, okay, I can't handle a knife like that. But yeah. in general, you know, how do we kind of demystify the cooking for the kids? How do we get them kind of interested in cooking, no matter what their age is? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, my children are very, very young. I have a 19-month-old and a four-year-old. Mm. And they are already in the kitchen. I mean, we just took actually a cooking class as part of a friend's birthday. And I was pleasantly surprised with how involved they were. Um, Some of the, the two most important factors that got them involved were the fact that things were brought down to their Mm. level. Um, The chefs that were working with them engaged them on what ingredients they were working on. They engaged them on, do you recognize these things? Do you not recognize these things? Here's the smell of this. This is what this one tastes like. These are the colors here. So really just engaging with the ingredients. But then another super important factor was giving them tools that they could use. And I mean, this is a tool. They gave them um, age-appropriate ergonomical plastic chef knives. Um, but they were serrated. So it wasn't just a toy. It was something that actually could accomplish a task. 
And I think the problem with kids is sometimes we give them tools that we think are safer or like a dumbed down version, but it doesn't accomplish the same skill set. Mm. So when you're cooking, what you're doing is you're teaching different techniques. That's something that I did with my book. Um, it's hard to whittle down, you know, basically a year's worth of recipes. So what I did was I tried to pick recipes that would teach different techniques. So I'm not just giving you a different recipe. I'm giving you a skill mm. with each step. And I think that that's what you do with your kids. When you bring them into the kitchen, you say, okay, you know, this is how we hold a knife. This is how we chop. So we make sure we're um, watching our fingers. This is what this ingredient is. This is how we use it. These are, um, you know, this is how you saute. This is how you bake. So every little skill that you're teaching them adds to their cooking vocabulary and adds to the next recipes they can accomplish. But just keeping them involved, I think making sure that you're not throwing something at them where they feel like almost like it's homework, but where there's a give and take. Yeah. And what I've tried to do with my own kids when they were little, of course, baking something was always a highlight. So, you know, get them in there on a stool, help them measure and mix. I mean, dump and then pushing buttons Mm -hmm. on in a mixer. Right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and then um, as they got older, um, I remember one of my own frustrations was my mom would say, okay, here's what you're making for dinner, yeah, and just tell me what I was making. Now, that was okay. I mean, it worked, um, but sometimes I was, like, resentful. <laughs> I didn't always yeah. want to be told what to do. So what I think what we've tried to do is, um, and throughout the school year, my my kids don't cook every week throughout the school year, but I try to make sure that at least two or three times a month, each child has a night where they're cooking, but they have to pick the menu. Um, so we have some, you know, children's cookbooks that aren't, you know, open a can of this and yeah. <laughs> dump the yeah. pasta in. I'm like, come on, people, they can do better than that. <laughs> um, and, you know, and that has helped um, engage them because I want to teach them more than just knife skills. I mean, cooking is more than yeah. just, like you said, the techniques is also that balanced meal kind of concept, too. Yeah, balanced meal, but also just balancing a dish, like how you get the right flavor out of it, Um, teaching them just to taste as they go and find what they like. I mean, I think it's exciting um, to discover new tastes, new flavors. And I mean, you can get inspiration a bunch of places, you know, a farmer's Mm -hmm. market. um, If there's a dish in a restaurant that you just love, sometimes it's fun to try to recreate it. Yeah. Or that goes ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, or even if, um, you know, sometimes my kids will run across something that they don't know in a grocery store and they're still um, drawn with the curiosity of, you know, what is this? I mean, my son's prime example, he's four years old. So everything is a, what is, what, <laughs> why? Yes. you know, every the question, I have a constant kind of stream of conscious dialogue going with him, but it is helpful because I mean, he's going through a picky stage, but for me, sometimes just getting something new on his plate, he doesn't have to finish it. He just has to try it. So for me, that's great just because it gives me ideas. It's easy to get stuck in a rut, too, of making the same dishes because you know they're acceptable. You know they'll get consumed and you're not wasting your time. And I think sometimes getting um, getting that spark in the kitchen, what you mentioned about having different kids rotate, I think it also adds... Um, a little spark to the kitchen, to your meal times together. Yeah, and it's funny because um, my my twelve year old son, he's all about f- what is everyone's specialty, you know. Oh, nice. You know, yeah. he has a specialty. Um, his older sisters each have something that they make fairly frequently. Um, that's uh-huh. very popular. So he keeps asking his younger brother, well, what's your specialty? I'm like, give him some time. <laughs> He's still working. <laughs> We're still working on it. Um, and it's kind of, um, it's been kind of fun to see their, you know, enthusiasm for it and, you know, and going through recipe books and letting them pick things and talking about, well, you know, the, you can't have, you know, and, and having that fit into our overall menu because, you know, we can't eat pasta. Th- well, we, maybe some people can, we can't eat pasta five nights a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I actually think you're they're doing such a great job too, because sometimes people don't even teach their kids to cook until college, if that. Yeah. And by starting early, 
just think about how many more dishes you're adding to their repertoire, like how many more skills. I mean, man, they have specialties yes, already. <laughs> I know, I know. It's kind of funny. Yeah. And it's been, um, and it's, you know, honestly, I'll just be, conf- here's my confession. It's partly selfish on my part because I don't love to cook. I mean, I don't mind it, but it's not a big passion of mine. So I'm like, huh, I have four kids. They could each take a night. <laughs> I think it's genius. I don't like to clean, but I give my son a spray bottle and he's in yes. heaven. And I'm like, wow, with my four-year-old windexing my house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> quick, quick digression. When my girls yeah. were uh, like two and four, I think, they came to me with these little impish grins. They're like, mommy, can we wash the kitchen floor? I'm like, um, sure, but why? Oh, we want to play Cinderella and you're the evil stepmother. I'm like, go for it, oh, girls. Wow. My kitchen floor was <laughs> clean for like months. They played that game all the time. It was great. That's just, I just think that's genius. That's um, parents who accomplish something like that. I said, you know, oh. you, that's a win. That's it's a win. A win. <laughs> um, and the other thing that um, I think is so important is, like you said, you know, either taking your kids to the grocery store, introducing, let the, letting them see um, their, their vegetables, especially in their natural yeah. environment. Um, we belong to a community supported agriculture, a farm, and we go out there often to see, and we have a small garden too. Um, yeah. and it is sometimes in just having them pick their own produce. You know, we go out and we okay. dig for potatoes one time. Well, they're more likely to eat those potatoes. Is that, I think we forget we need to make those connections with them. Yeah, that is 100% correct. And I'd also tack on the fact I live in an apartment in New York City and we have a small garden, but even out of um, a windowsill, you could have an herb garden, mm. you can have ingredients. It takes very little space, very little effort, and you do not have to have a green thumb, but you're 100% correct that um, you're going to have a child that's more engaged in that ingredient and much more willing to eat it because they'll have a sense of pride that they grew it. Or even just taking them to farmer's markets. I mean, those are what? almost everywhere. And even if you don't buy something, you know, this thing is, it's fun yeah. to go around the shop. Right. To things that are not um, in plastic, to touch things that um, have a little dirt on them. You know, to know where things come right. from. Right. And um, I know there's a kind of an ugly vegetable share that you can get from certain places, uh, yeah. which just cracked me what? up. And I, and I, we talk about this because we get the stuff on the farm. And I remember the first time um, I think we got the, the carrots look kind of weird. And they're like, why do these don't look like the ones from the store? I said, because these aren't prettified. I mean, these are like what carrots generally look like. Yeah. Um, and so it's been interesting to kind of help them with that education and have that closer connection for those of us who don't live on farms. And I mean, and, and at this point, that's like most of us, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, thinking that everything comes from the grocery store, I don't think can give us that appreciation for food and that that interest in food, that food is more interesting when you know, hey, you know, carrots can look kind of funky. <laughs> Yeah, but also the appreciation for food, mm. too, um, because you start to realize, like, how much effort it takes to create food. How I mean, I try to see my kids how lucky they are, too, mm-hmm. and to not waste as much either, just to utilize what we have. Um, I'm a big, big proponent of, like, a localized food movement. I'd really like food to dial back from being mass processed mm. and... But um, that takes baby steps and that takes, uh, I think, recognition at each family level. So I think what you're saying about going to farmers markets, going with children, engaging them in how food is grown, how food is made, how it gets to where it goes is such a wonderful step. It is. And I um, and we are um, we're pretty passionate about local. We buy you know, our meat from a local rancher and, um, you know, having those relationships and having, um, you know, we spend a lot, our grocery bill is pretty high, (laughs) you know, because Mm -hmm. we just feel like what we put into our bodies is really important. And so we, we choose to spend, you know, more of our money on that and less on, you know, cable TV. So we don't actually don't have cable TV. So, I mean, that's like a huge choice we make. Um, so, and we talked, and you talked about um, having preparing your kids, um, you know, for the future. Uh, and you mm-hmm. also talked about like some kitchen tools. I think um, 
yeah, that they should I, have. Um, what I really believe is that you don't um, send your kids off with a dumbed down version. I actually think it's almost, you know, like a parting gift. If like, if you're talking about sending your kid off to college, send them with a couple good things for their kitchen and they'll already be well prepared. Um, some of my things are um, a chef's knife, like a mm. good chef's knife, sharp, uh, a Dutch oven, which is absolutely one of my favorite cooking um cooking pots because you can do everything in it. You can almost do everything mm. in a Dutch oven. Um, a good cutting board, you know, not one of those plastic ones that you're getting plastic remnants when you chop or that moves around on you, but just a good cutting board, um, a paring knife, a great frying pan, and then the little ones like a vegetable peeler, a microplane, a good spatula, a whisk and wooden spoons. Okay. Um, so what's, things- what's a microplane? <laughs> A microplane is, it's like a mini grater. Okay. So if you think of it's like a long stick and if you wanted to do lemon zest or lime zest or you want to just a uh, zest of something, it's just the perfect tool for that. It accomplishes it fast. And these are things that you don't have to buy all at once. I mean, probably you're talking your chef's knife and your Dutch oven, they're most expensive things. Mm-hmm. These can be, I mean, these can be holiday presents, they can be birthday presents, but they can also be something that you add to which I think is an exciting thing um, for kids, especially as they're starting off on their own and they want to be more independent, knowing that they have, you know, their own little kitchen set is exciting. You know, you can ask um, friends and family to throw in favorite spices or favorite, you know, little cooking tools, some tea towels, and you can just build to it. Oh, I just think it's an exciting and like a fun way with minimal investment. You can get them well prepared for starting their own kitchens. I love that. And I think that that is such a, um, such a great idea. And I am, I'm going to file that one away. <laughs> and use it because, um, you know, I mean, my, my parents helped me build my, my kitchen, um, a little bit, um, but mm-hmm. you know, having a good chef's knives was not one of the items. Um, my husband and I yeah. actually just bought like a really. That's what we asked. That's what we asked for for Christmas was gift cards so we could get a really nice set of knives. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, I'm tired of these old knives. And to be honest, they have like revolutionized <laughs> my cooking. I was like, oh, so. Yeah, you can really mince onions small if you have a sharp yeah. knife. It you know, was like a yeah, re- you start to feel more competent, yes. a lot more competent if you're working with good tools. Yeah, and so now I'm training my children on these good tools, and I'm like, I'm probably spoiling them forever. But I just had no idea, really, not really being raised by you know my mom yeah. cooks. She cooks wonderfully, but it was just kind of a revelation to go, oh right, really good tools make a difference. <laughs> Yeah, they make a huge difference. I talk about um, like a dull pair of scissors. You know, you really can't accomplish much. If you give a kid a dull set of scissors, what are they going to do? They're actually more likely probably to hurt themselves because they'll be um, hacking away at something instead of actually like cutting. And it's the same thing with a knife or the same thing with a pan. Um, you use the right tools. And the right tools also, a lot of people worry, um, you know, like, oh, my kid won't take care of it over time. But really good tools are actually hardier, too, yes. than the cheap ones. It's like um, buy cheap, buy twice um, really, really is applicable for kitchen um, tools and also um, equipment. Because if you buy something cheap, it is going to break down. It's going to break down faster um, and with less wear. Right, right. And as and your point about, you know, something that's dull, it's, it is much harder. Really yeah, and you do. You push down. Anyway, so it's been... And it can slip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, um, you know, the knives we have now are super sharp. So I'm like, okay, we have to be a little more careful. But I am kind of glad I'm training them on, you know, sharper knives because I'm like, okay, this will be this will be helpful. Um, So now talk a little bit about your um, in the few minutes we have left. Talk a little bit about your cookbook. So I wrote the ultimate new mom's cookbook. Um, I actually created it because I was working in the food industry um, when my son was born and I just felt overwhelmed. Um, I felt like I really wanted to make the best choices for my child, but I felt like I was cooking for him and then neglecting myself and my husband. So I really wanted to create meals uh, that fed everyone at once just to maximize the time for each dish. 
So with my cookbook, um, one of the ways I did that is my son liked purees, my daughter didn't. But because he liked purees, I tried to remind people of all the things that we eat purees as an adult, like a sorbet. A fruit sorbet mm-hmm. is a puree of fruit. Um, a lot of vegetable soups are purees. Um, a lot of, I mean, smoothies, classic example. So just like I was talking about, about techniques, I'm talking about um, here's how you feed a child, here's how you feed yourself. And also introducing interesting flavors. I mean, not overwhelming a child, obviously, but it doesn't also have to be bland. So um, talking about how you age up food, I have also in there, the book begins with pregnancy and goes all the way through family meals, family meals that we're still enjoying now as my children are older and will continue to enjoy because I have friends who do not have kids or not even married who bought the cookbook because they like my fish tacos so much. (laughs) Now that is quite the compliment. <laughs> yeah, but it's no, but I really wanted to have, you know, just um, meals that can be accomplished in a short amount of time, but that are also interesting enough that, like you said, they're not just like, here's five ingredients, dump them together and stir. Yes. You know, you want it to be something that can be accomplished in a working parent schedule, um, especially when you have young children that need to be fed. I worked with a nutritionist. She gave amazing chapter um, introductions and nutritional information and guides by age. We have, tri- uh, you know, tricks for feeding picky eaters. We have, um, you know, on the go solutions for like, these are really easy foods to pack with you if you're vacationing, if you're traveling. So really just, it's that introduction cookbook for a first time parent of the, I, at the time it really does feel daunting. How do you feed an infant? Yes. And we start with pregnancy. How do you feed yourself, the infant, and then all the way through family meals? Right. Well, thank you. I, I'm sure, um, our, many of my listeners will want to check out that cookbook. Um, but thank you for being here to talk about cooking with kids. And remember listeners, this is not hard. Start small, get your kids in the kitchen make some messes and teach them how to clean it up too. <laughs> and have fun. And have, right. And have fun. Um, you have been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hammerker. And today's guest has been Aurora Sattler. She is the author of the Ultimate New Mom's Cookbook. And she um, lives in New York City and cooks often with her kids. I uh, hope you'll join me next week. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hammaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammaker.com. Until next time, remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.